I'm Jonathan Frizz, and uh, gathered with me here today are several friends. Uh, to my right, I have uh, Dana Baker, pastor of multicultural ministries at Grace Chapel. Uh, Keith Bellevue, um, who led the 10 Day South Shore this fall, and Latanya Brown, who uh, was involved in the 10 Days this fall in Boston, and is also the leader of Forerunners for Christ yeah. Ministries here, mm-hmm. here in the city of Boston. So it's good to be together, guys. It's good to be here. Thank yep, you. it is. For those of you who are watching, we just came off of like two hours of incredible conversation mm, yes, and sharing yeah, testimonies. Yes. So we're just going to continue doing that now on camera. I think our hearts are all really full um, as we enter in here. But, but um, yeah, wanting to just hear what were some of the major themes that God that you saw God emphasize during the ten days of prayer this year, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. both on yeah. the South Shore in Boston? What was God doing um, with us, with His people during this time? Mm-hmm. 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 Ten days is definitely aligned with what the Spirit is just doing, you know, in the city, and just hearing the testimonies of how people um, are just sort of hungry for this, and really just mm-hmm. sort of anticipating next year mm-hmm. um, is just uh, a confirmation for like for what the Lord is doing you know just people being hungry to sort of like pray together to intercede together to believe that God is sort of bringing the body together in unity um, and sort of like celebrating our how we're the same mm-hmm. and not ignoring the differences you know which leads to the conversation we had earlier I, I think it's just a really powerful uh, testament to you know to to the power of the Holy Spirit and to Christ. Yeah, yeah. I think we talked a lot about um, the fact that 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 God is a creative God, mm-hmm. and it seemed like everyone that was involved in hosting churches and stuff like that felt the freedom to mm-hmm. be able to be authentically who they were, to mm-hmm. be authentically who their church was, mm-hmm. and yet invite others into that space. Yeah. And that um, one of the beauties of Ten Days Boston is it has a framework and it has something that draws the pieces together, but that framework is not so tight mm-hmm. that it causes a church to have to feel like it, it's being molded into something mm-hmm. that's right. not, not unique to them. Right. Um, they're allowed, they're given freedom um, for individual expression. And, mm-hmm. and, and God's creative. We don't know all of what he's gonna do. And I think we kind of come with expectancy, right. yep. waiting to see what he's gonna do. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was um, great. I mean, this was our first venture in 10 days on the South Shore. And um, going into it, we really didn't know. And mm-hmm. I, I think I, I think we were probably anticipating more of a, a large corporate thing that was going on, which, which it was. Um, but there was such, as I, as I talked to people, there was such a deep personal work mm-hmm. that was going on in the people that, that committed themselves to the fasting. Mm-hmm and the prayer, and it became more and more evident night after night uh, of getting together. Mm -hmm. It feels like the first, I mean, the first night was incredible, but you could really see like a, this um, nervous energy that we all carry when Mm. we meet new people and things like that. But as people really dedicated time to to fasting and, and, and spending time with the Lord, it just seems like all that negative energy, mm-hmm. night after night, just was dissolving, and by by the end, it, we just there was just a, a fluidity between spirits and between mm-hmm. people that mm-hmm. it just was a, a clear indicator of what yeah. God was doing in people. Yeah, I, I just got to come down on the South Shore for one night, but mm-hmm. I felt like I mean, and I shared this with you, like some of the people that I knew down there were like different people. Yeah. I mean, this was so seven or eight days in, sure. I was like. Are you the same person that I've met? <laughs> you are so different. Yeah. And that was amazing to wow. see that happen as yeah. well. Yeah. Dana, I know we've talked about how like we felt like God was kind of doing a deeper work mm-hmm. this year. What can you comment any more on that? Just like what that what that deeper work was? But no, I'm putting you on the spot. But. Yeah, no. So, I mean, I, I, I like what you said, Keith. It's, it was kind of, uh, there was a corporate expression, but there also was an individual mm-hmm. expression. And so, honestly, one of the most um, significant times for me was when I was at Pastor Lorraine's church, International Community Church, and she actually invited um, pastors that were there to come up and be able to pray individually. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't, that happened, I think, in other places. I wasn't able to attend all 10 days. 
But that was a powerful moment for me to be in a position to pray for someone sure. that I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and both of the two women that God, you know, kind of drew up to pray with me, um, it was just, it was a powerful time. And you, so you did sense that God was working on multiple levels. So Grace Chapel hosted one last year, and then this year we did it in partnership with the City Without Walls steering team in, at Morningstar, which was the site of a conference several years ago. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, the two years were very different mm -hmm. in terms of how, um, which is also part of that creativity. I mean, again, God doesn't just repeat himself. Yeah. He's always making things new. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I think we had more of that sense and maybe it was partly because of the daytime prayer that was much more intentional this year. Right, right. We had daytime prayer last year, definitely, but this year, um, mainly due to the involvement of YWAM Boston. And mm. that, we just had more people that yeah. were present. During and that. I feel like that, I feel like um, just from what I've heard from from the team there with YWAM, um, who I'll just because of this I'll forever just be you know knit in my heart <laughs> to them, them in an <laughs> incredible way. Um, but but you know it was a transformative experience for their team, and I think also just mm. having a little more uh, momentum. I mean, we had last year you know some sometimes during the day there were there was four or five people, sometimes there was more. But this year it was, yeah, it was definitely a different level, I think, in that mm -hmm. aspect. And I think in the whole 10-day vision, this element of personal transformation, yeah. mm -hmm. um, it doesn't come from coming to one night. Mm -hmm. like, you could have an experience with God if you come to one night, right. but like what Keith was describing, right. with people coming day after yes. day after day, yeah. that's where the personal transformation yeah, happens. Absolutely. And I think YWAM was like an, a poster child of that, mm. you know, <laughs> because I mean, uh, you know, a, a lot of the individuals that were coming out to the daytime prayer, because I, you know, I was coming up to some of the ones in Boston, mm. but there was such a transformation in them, and this is kind of what, the, you know, I feel 10 days is about, is, mm. is honoring what the church has been doing but also calling them back to like first things first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know I mean we're unity is not going to happen unless our spirits are united yes. right. with the father and in the son and and yeah. the spirit right and that's really where it starts and if it starts one person at a time mm -hmm. you know like I said YWAM was just an example of that they would like and they'll say I mean they are great workers but sometimes you know, you go out and the, the work is done in in the self and it's so much easier when it's mm. done in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is kind of what the 10 days is doing is calling people back home to, to get first things first, mm -hmm. that, that unity first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think you can't really, um, the personal transformation piece is, is critical because you can't really understand someone else until you deal with your own issues first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Right. right. So that how are we going to be united since you? I mean, since I have so many issues. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You can say because <laughs> I do. I, I like I to point the finger. That's how, I, that's how I like to roll. Because <laughs> I do have issues, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so true. It's like, yeah. um, you know, it's easy to sort of like, come on, let's all come together, you yeah. know, but until we sort of like be, allow the Holy Spirit to go to those places, Absolutely. you know, um, I'm thinking about the scripture in Psalms where, you know, God desires truth in our innermost being and in mm. the parts, you know, and so first God has to sort of the, get to the truth in us. Mm -hmm you know, Absolutely. to get to those places in us where we don't really like to go. Yeah. And then, then we can look at our brother and sister a little differently. Um, and really sort of that, that unity is true unity. It's right. not just sort of putting us together and wanting to speak, yeah, we're unified, yes. you know. It's right. like, yeah, we're actually just in the same right. you know, space here. We're not unified exactly. until that deep work right. of person, you know, personal mm -hmm. transformation takes place. Yes, yes. Well, and the reality is actually is that you're just going to keep going on the same rut that you've always been on if you don't have, if, you, if God doesn't come in and somehow change the direction or trajectory of your life. Right. So one of the things we've been talking about with, as the City Without Walls steering team is how do you create spaces for that personal transformation to happen? Mm -hmm. In other words, when you're trying to create a city without walls, when you're trying to tear down barriers that have existed for decades mm -hmm. or hundreds of years, mm -hmm. that is not a work that we can do in our own strength. Mm -hmm. But 
how do you create a place where that can happen, where you can enter into God's presence? And that's what I think 10 Days Boston does. Yes, yes. And, and you're right, if it's just a single event, you come in, you may be transformed, but if you're doing it multiple days at a time, then all of a sudden there's room for God to build mm -hmm. on right. each experience. Right. And each one of those, I think then there's more lasting change and transformation. Right, yeah. right. And we were talking before we started filming about that, the dynamic that we're talking about as part of the New Covenant that um, we're inviting people, hey, don't come to hear a speaker, don't come to, I yes. mean, obviously these things are great. We right. love teaching, et cetera. Absolutely. We love the Bible, we love the scriptures being taught, but we're saying, no, there's something in the new covenant where God teaches us himself mm -hmm. by yeah. the Holy Spirit, and we're inviting people to yes. kind of like trust that process. Exactly. Yes. And I know it's scary sometimes, because yes. you're like, yes. is this really gonna work? But right. I, I think after hearing all the testimonies today, I was like, wow. Yeah, there were some hitches here and there, but this, like, God really worked through this. It, yeah. was, it, was, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I can <clears throat> just share a quick story from, you know, I, we got about two or three days in, and, you know, we were all kind of trying to discern where the Lord wanted to bring us each night mm -hmm. and what we were supposed to be praying for. And, you know, I, we were kind of surprised by, by what came out of that because mm -hmm. about two or three nights in, we, we really felt that the Lord was most, his, his greatest desire for, for us was just to know us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, 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 that peace in you when you sit in your car or you are alone and that, that knowing that you know in the part of you that knows that you know him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I, absolutely, I think. <laughs> so, I, you know, and, and, you know, so we just, we, before we even got into the 10 days vision one night, before we did anything else, you know, we just said, let's look into our spirits and say, mm. do we know him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was an incredible night. And, and, you know, out of that, some of the, some of the testimonies were, you know, I, you know, my, my wife came and she, you know, we were talking about it and she said, I just felt like the Lord was overwhelmingly pleased mm -hmm. with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And it was just, cool. wow. and you can say that, but until you feel that in your spirit, I mean, I was jealous of it. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's great, you know? So that, that was some of the really exciting things. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You know, it's, it strikes me as we're all sitting here that I think we're all people who um, like are really working and living for like Jesus to get the fulfillment to his prayer in John 17. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we were talking earlier, hey, that's going to be a miracle. But I, I don't know, like are we, I just feel like we're, I feel like we're on to something. I, I don't know. I'm just like, it's. We believe this, how, how is it that we believe this impossible thing, being one as the Father and the Son are one, is right. going to happen? Like, mm -hmm. why do we believe that? Right. You know, like, what is it that gives us conviction about that? Yeah. And how do we see um, steps in that direction, even mm -hmm. um, during 10 days, but not just during 10 days, you know, other things that are happening? Why are we giving our lives to this? Because it strikes me that it's something that's very important for all of us in, in how God's called us. Yeah. Well, I think once you even get a little taste of what that unity is like, mm -hmm. you don't want to go back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like God is just, you know, I guess I feel like the baby bird analogy. You know, he's, he's feeding us little bits of this and right. sort of like, you don't want to go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't think it was by chance that you brought up that passage that describes the new covenant or, mm -hmm. or prophesied mm -hmm. of this coming new covenant right. that we're living in but when we look around, we're not really seeing the full fruit of it. Right. And I mean, the promise of the covenant mm -hmm. is that we would know him and mm -hmm. that he would be our God and we would be his people. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, it's the reality. The covenant is here and, and, and we're, we're interceding. We're asking the Lord to extend the covenant to mm -hmm. more people and more to people. bring more people into that covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, when you talked about, well, I think you were talking about Keith, the whole knowing, um, and I was thinking about um, Jonathan when you were sort of explaining earlier, when you were sort of meeting with all the different ministries about 10 days and explaining the whole like longing for the bridegroom, that yeah. piece. Mm -hmm. um, the, the God has just been dealing with me and I just sort of came to this realization. That I think it probably started with the whole 10 days notion, but the, just, so I had to first come to this realization that God loves me regardless of anything, yes. he loves me, yeah. right? Mm. 
Um, and recently, God has been just dealing with me, my love for Him, you know, mm. which is, I don't think I really focused a lot of attention on that, you know. It's mm -hmm. like, no, Lord, I really do love you, you know. And, um, and when I realized that I got to, and that's, it's a mutual sort of like exchange. It's mm. the intimacy. Mm. It's true intimacy. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I love you. You know, mm -hmm. and, and we have script. I mean, this is part of the, you know, the first commandment, right? Um, but God has just been really sort of getting to that place, you know, so the covenant, mm -hmm. the new covenant, you know, it's in that intimacy that we're able to sort of like make a commitment to that covenant. Yeah, you know? I mean, that reminds me of, <clears throat> you know, the final chapter in, in John when Jesus, you know, meets the disciples on the shore and he mm -hmm. says to Peter, do you yes. love and he says oh, it three yeah. times and it yeah. almost feels like he's drawing deeper things out of him each time because right. he yeah I mean we all say yeah Lord we love you yeah. but do we love you yes. you know so, so. and actually it's that place of love that gives us the security to be able to risk mm -hmm. and that's what's going to it's going to take to actually really be able to move beyond the boundaries that have kind of divided us up yeah, to right. this point right. because it is risky and right. it's not easy and we you know we probably certainly don't want to convey mm -hmm. to people that are listening that this is easy work no. um, in fact I think <laughs> <laughs> Because we can sound like we're having a love fest yeah, here. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. There was daisies and rainbows every day. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that was the other so thing. So you we face are... some opposition because I've never <laughs> experienced it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think that you, you talked earlier about themes, and I think that was one of the themes that we, we heard, that there were some key points where it just felt like, um, nothing was going to work or you know I think Miwan was the one who was sharing about mm -hmm. everything and so I think particularly and then YWAM I think shared the same thing mm -hmm. and you shared you mm -hmm. shared in your journey that where there are key boundaries that need to be broken down mm -hmm. you know the enemy's not gonna yeah. uh, allow us to break through that easily That's and right. so yeah. um, but you're not willing if you're not feeling secure mm -hmm based in the love of God, you're not going to push on those boundaries because right. you're going to be too fearful of what the backlash is going to yeah. be when right. you do yes. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if we don't have hope that yes. God is overcome. going to, you know, that God is going to bring a breakthrough and mm -hmm. that, like, I think sometimes people are afraid of the word unity. They feel like it means the same thing as compromise, right. which is, um, <laughs> I think, maybe bad experiences in the past. You know, right. people have that. But if we don't have the hope, that the people that we're reaching out to, that the Lord is going to mm -hmm. bring us into a full place of agreement. If mm -hmm. we don't have that hope in the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives, we can't reach out to them either. Right. Yeah. And that's a huge, right. a huge thing. And I mean, you know, something that, that you just said that really um, impacted me was that you really can't skip the process. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, the process. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we have to. The process is just as important sometimes as the end result. Absolutely. You know, and and like like you just said, this this unity thing that that the Lord said is going to happen. He mm. prophesied that it was going to happen, yes. and he will. It will come about. Yeah. But is as much as that's a reality, it's equally a reality that it's completely impossible. Absolutely. We are seeking a miracle. Right. Right. We are, and you know, and when we lose, you know, we lose track of that, that we think that there's things that we can do. Actually, it's, it's a completely miraculous thing mm -hmm. that we're seeking. Mm -hmm. And it really takes off the, the pressure from us because mm -hmm. right, we have a part to play. But really, what, when we're seeking a miraculous thing, it only has a re miraculous result, right. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it deals with faith, right? It's like, yes. mm -hmm. you know, it's so it's uh, it's interesting. Just our framework, we uh, don't we believe God to a certain point. We believe what we read, you know, um, um, but but our God specializes in miracles, mm -hmm. right? That's right. usually how God manifests Himself. Right. To us. You know, you just read the Bible, like, why did you choose to do it that way? You know, like, you had to... <laughs> you, the last minute. Exactly. You, <laughs> you had to, like, lead yep. uh, the nation of Israel to the Red Sea. Right. You couldn't take them another way. Like, you exactly. really had to lead them to... The, well, yes, but, but then all the other nations were able to sort of testify of yes. the greatness of yeah. the God of the Israel, exactly. of Israel, you know, exactly. because of how he delivered them through the Red Sea on dry land, you know. So that God, our faith in believing God in that way for Absolutely. unity and saying it's impossible, but 
nothing is impossible with our God. You yeah, know? Yeah. you know, and even in that story too, I mean, you know, he leads him to the Red Sea and, uh, you know, it's, it's about the process as well. Exactly. Because Moses says, you know, you know stand firm and watch because the Lord is going to do this. Mm -hmm. And he turns around and, and actually the Lord says, actually, you, I've built you up so you're going to do this. You raise the staff. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And, and, you know, before the Lord did it, yep. he was the one that was, you know, and then, you know, and so Moses was, was almost going out of the old pattern. Mm -hmm. And then he's, the Lord said, no, this is the new pattern. You That's raise right. the staff. Yeah. You stretch out the rod and, and you part the sea. And I affirm that process part too because I think, you know, you could get the impression that it's all about the 10 days, but it's mm -hmm. really not. It's right. about the journeys that God has brought every person that's a part of the mm -hmm. 10 days on, and then somehow he brings them together and, you know, creates fruit out of those journeys. Right. So the one we hosted at Morningstar, the City Without Walls, was the product of, you know, literally almost an 18-month, two-year wow. um, process of five of six of us meeting together to try and figure out what is this ongoing journey look like from this conference we hold, held in April of 2010 oh, yeah. uh, what is this ongoing journey going to look like and we prayed and we and, and each time we would show up having no idea what it is that God wanted to do yeah. but <laughs> then he ended up birthing it and then literally the 10 days right as we felt like we were starting to get a handle on what it was that God wanted us to do the 10 days was happening and it gave us a chance to test what we've been praying about and God just manifested all kinds of things through mm -hmm. it that right. that and we just we all walked out almost like high-fiving one another going, <laughs> and going yes we did hear God because <laughs> here's the fruit but right. God did it yeah. we were I love we were just faithful mm -hmm. to show up and be and, and and try and act out what God had put on yeah. our heart but mm -hmm. then but then God worked powerfully through that to yeah. accomplish things so far beyond what we could yeah. have ever wanted and you just yeah. get so excited but it's yeah. such a comfortable experience being in that yeah. point before yeah, you know when you're like oh, 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 what yeah, am oh, I yeah. doing <laughs> what am I doing <laughs> <laughs> why am I here <laughs> I almost believed so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why am I here <laughs> oh man but it's good that we can I mean, you know, it's really just yeah, the life of faith, I guess. Yeah. Believing yeah. God's promises and living it out. So just like Abraham or any other right. person of faith, we're doing that. And I think it's really good that we have each other to do that with and yeah. many, many others around um, the region in New England. And we want to invite more Amen. just to have this outrageous hope yes. that yes. Jesus is bringing his church together, that he's going to fulfill that the Father is going to answer Jesus' prayer in John 17. Yes. Um, can we just pray into that, and Amen. then we'll, yeah. we'll wrap it up here. Amen. Let's do it. So a couple, couple of us go for it. Lord, we just um, thank you for the work that you are doing. Um, and we just say more, Lord. We just, uh, we just open our arms to the wonderful gifts that you've poured out, Lord. We open our arms to the wonderful gift of, of the friend and the comforter, the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Lord, we ask for more workers in the field, Lord Jesus. And um, we just bless you uh, for, for that, Lord. And we just ask you that um, this covenant that you have, have made with your people, Lord God, that you would just... Um, sweep your arm down from heaven and just sweep more people into this covenant, Lord. This covenant to know you, Lord God. And we just bless your name, Jesus. Father, you desire that we all know you. Um, not some elite group of people that can say we are the knowers of God. But God, you want to have intimacy with all of your people, Lord. So we just thank you for that, Lord, and we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for the work of 10 days. Um, we just thank you for your spirit moving f freely um, throughout New England and in Boston, Lord. And we, uh, we are just anticipating um, what you're going to continue to do um, as far as unifying your body. Um, so Lord, we just speak life into this process, Lord. Um, we speak uh, deliverance and healing and, and all of the, 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 the individual people and the ministries that we've touched and those that we're going to touch, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for the healing that's going to happen in the streets of Boston and in the streets of the South Shore and the North Shore and, 
and all of the other areas. Lord, we just thank you for just how you are um, going to rebuild, Lord, and restore things that have been downtrodden, Lord, places where people have given up hope, God. Um, we thank you, Lord, because you're restoring that hope, Lord. Um, so we just ask you, Lord, that you just continue, Lord, to bring us together and to continue to believe that you um, are the God of the miraculous, Lord. Um, you're looking to wow us in, in so many different ways. So we just thank you, Lord, for that. And Lord, we pray that you may touch the hearts of many of those that will listen to this time of conversation and prayer today, Lord, because we have heard so many testimonies of people who felt so felt called to be a part of this, Lord. And so would you continue to call into people's hearts and minds, and even some of those that are listening, Lord, that you might touch their hearts, raise them up, help them to look around where you've placed them yes. and understand how they might be a part of this in the future. And Lord, we especially pray um, for Jonathan as he seeks to understand what this would look like in New Hampshire and Maine and Rhode Island and Connecticut and Vermont and Lord and Western Massachusetts, wherever you put on his heart um, to continue to expand what it is that you've started and birthed here um, in the Boston area. Yeah, Lord, I just thank you. It says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom and there's life. And so, God, I'm just uh, honestly overwhelmed just by um, the amount of life and freedom and joy and fellowship, Lord, that, that we've had today here at this table, Lord, and at other tables. And so, Father, we just give you so much thanks for that, God. We just ask you to, uh, yeah, God, just keep our hearts in that, that uh, simple and childlike place of wonder. Yes. Um, at what you're doing, Lord, um, and, uh, and that place of faith, Lord, where we're always out on the edge, a little uncomfortable, God, but confident that you're going to come through. And uh, yeah, Father, fill us with hope and ground us in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.